friends, my name is Mei Lin and welcome back to my channel. I'm a flutist, music teacher, and performer located in the city of Toronto and this is my series where we learn how to play the flute from scratch. So thank you so much for joining me here again today. In today's video we'll be learning how to play upper F sharp in G. Uh, so if you're interested then just keep on watching. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. And of course, uh, if you are having any issues when it comes to practicing, feel free to check out my free practice guide, also located in the description down below. It gives you eight easy steps for you to follow to have more productive practice sessions. Um, so otherwise, if you're interested, uh, just before I start this video, make sure you click the like if you like the video. Um, and otherwise, let's just get right into it. So as per usual, we're looking through the Trevor Wise Beginner's Book for the Flute Part 1. And we'll be starting on page 49 where we left off last week. So I'm just going to put up the fingering here for uh, upper F sharp and G. So it's very similar to how we played G before. So if you remember G, it's exactly the same fingering. And it's also really similar to F. All you're doing is changing one note. So first we'll start with the F sharp. So if you remember F, it's going to be G plus that one. So this is F. Now we're going to play F sharp. So all you're going to do is switch this finger to the fourth finger in your right hand. And just uh, and as a reminder, it is a semitone higher than F sharp. So, or sorry, than F. So this is F sharp. And then of course, G is again a semitone higher than an F sharp, so that's what this sounds like. What we're going to do is we're going to do, of course, some tone exercises now that we've learned a new note. So I'm going to put the first one right here. It's going to be very simple. I'm not going to clap it or uh, not going to clap and count, sorry. I'm just going to play it for you. So one, two, three. So again, don't forget to take that a little bit slower if you want to really focus on taking beautiful, nice, deep breaths and getting the most beautiful, luxurious sound you can. All right, now we're going to do the next one here. So this one's in three, four. Again, I'm not going to clap it because it's just quarter notes with uh, a dotted half note at the end, which means it just equals three beats. And if you want to, don't hesitate to write down the letter nines, especially at the end there as a reminder for yourself where the accidentals are. One, two, three, one, two. Beautiful. And uh, did you notice any patterns in that tone exercise? Uh, so what I noticed is that we actually moved up for every single bar, we moved up one step. So starting on G, then we went to A, B, C, D, all the way up until the end where it changes that pattern at uh, the second last bar. So, so that we end on G. All right, and then we're gonna do one more today and that's going to be the one right underneath it. So this one's in four, four. Uh, again, I'm not going to clap, I'm just gonna play it for you. And don't forget that we are playing F sharp in here. It is noted in the key signature. So right beside that four, four squished in between the treble clef and the time signature. And then also make sure that you are playing the slurs with this one too. So one, two, very good and in this tone exercise we actually learned how to play G major so now you can play G major up from one octave which is really really great so congratulations all right so now that we've done that we're going to go on to the scale exercise in G major so I'm gonna put that up right here so this one, will, we will do the clap and count. And just as a reminder, we are, because we're in G major, that means we are playing the F uh, sharp. And we are in 4-4 four, four as well. So four quarter notes per measure. One, two, three, and four. One, and two, and three, four. One, and two, and three, four. One, and two, and three, and four. And one, two, three, press. One, and two, three, and four. One, and two. Three, four. All right. 
So again, I'll play this one for you. Um, this one might take you a little bit longer just because it is tricky. We are playing in that higher register. Um, so make sure that when you are getting up into that high register, that your air becomes a little bit colder, you're focusing your embouchure a little bit more down and a little bit smaller, just so that you are able to get those notes. But don't hesitate to put in more air. Uh, I know, especially when we're in the higher notes, it can start sounding a little bit shrill. That's totally okay. It's just like working out. So the more that we uh, get into that octave, the more comfortable you're gonna get. Uh, so don't hesitate to put lots of air between uh, behind those notes. One, two, three, and. <laughs> So with that one, if, of course, if you feel uncomfortable with that, go back into the, the video settings here. So that little gear playback settings and feel free to slow that down as much as you need and practice that um, little by little so that you can get it all the way up to that tempo whenever you're ready. All right. And so for the piece today, all we're going to do is flip the page onto page 50 and we're going to be doing the maypole dance. So I'm going to put that up right over here. So again, this one is another duet. So if you take a look at the roadmap that we have here, so we are in cut time, which means we're playing two over two. So two half notes per measure. We're in G major, which means we have at the F sharp. And then let's see how uh, we're going to be playing through this. So we have, uh, we're playing it repeat the first time. So repeat the first line. And then what we're going to do is we're going into that second line. And then after we play the second line, it says D, C, L, Fine. So what DC means is da capo, which means to go right back up to the beginning. So that means we're going to start again at the beginning. And then after the DC, it says RAL after DC. And the fine is where the double bar line is at the first line. So essentially, the roadmap is we're going to play that first line. We're going to repeat it once. Then we play the second line. After we finish the second line, we go back to the first line. And then we RAL at the end. Now, it sounds a little bit confusing. But once you play, it's going to make a lot more sense. OK. So what we're going to do is, of course, we're going to clap and count this. Uh, oh, just as a reminder, the tempo marking here is allegro, so that means quickly. So I'm going to do the first part, and I'm, do, I'm not going to uh, clap my, any of the repeats, but I will play it in its correct uh, form. So we're just going to clap uh, the two lines straight through. All right, so we're going to take out this tempo. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Four, one, and two, and three. Rest. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and two, and three. Rest. Okay, so not too difficult, but it is all in the little details with this duet for sure. So make sure that you are getting any of the staccato notes in there and then any of the slurs as well. They're all really important. So again, I'm going to be playing it and I will play it as the roadmap indicates. So one, two, three, and... <laughs> The same for the uh, second part. Uh, this one again, I won't clap just because again it's so similar. The only thing that changes is the last bar on both the lines. So instead of playing uh, eighth notes for the first beat and the second beat for the first line last bar, we're just playing quarters. And then for the second line, all we're doing is switching uh, two of those eighth notes for a quarter. Okay, so we'll take it at that same tempo. One, two. Thank you. 
short video for today. As per usual, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. Also, if you are having issues with practicing, feel free to check out my practice guide, also located in the description down below. And if you like this video, please be sure to press the like button. And for more videos like this, per, uh, definitely be sure to press subscribe. And if you like all the videos that I'm going to be coming out with, so again, I'm going to be coming out with some really cool covers and arrangements, uh, feel free to click the little bell notification as well. So next week's video is actually going to be the second last video in this series, which is really, really crazy to imagine. I've been doing this video since like the beginning of January. And actually, I mean, it's been since last year. So kind of crazy that it's almost come to an end, but I do have a whole bunch of other videos uh, in store. So don't worry if you do like these videos when it comes to learning the flute from the scratch. Um, we're going to have a lot of great technique uh, videos that are coming up. But anyway, uh, for next week's video, we'll be learning all about C sharp minor. So if you're interested, then again, make sure that you are click, you've, you've clicked subscribe and little bell notification. And as always, happy flitting.